So there's some important ideas here, even though this is confusing. One important idea is that relatively stronger acids have relatively weaker conjugate bases. But the other important idea is that an absolutely weak acid has an absolutely weak conjugate base. Absolutely weak acids always have absolutely weak conjugate bases. And it's important to see why that is. Um, so we know this is a weak acid, right? That means this reaction goes to equilibrium. But that means that both the forward and the reverse reactions um, have to happen, and we have to stop in the middle. So there's no way that this could be a strong base. Because if, if this was strong, the reaction would go all the way in the reverse direction. Okay. So that explains why an absolutely strong acid. So if you, have an, uh, if you have an absolutely weak acid, that means that it goes to equilibrium with its conjugate. Well, if the weak acid is going to equilibrium with its conjugate, then the conjugate is going to equilibrium with the weak acid. So they must both be weak, because they're both going to equilibrium. So it should make sense that um, absolutely weak acids have to have absolutely weak conjugate bases. Otherwise, this reaction couldn't go to equilibrium. It would have to go to completion either in the forward or the reverse direction. That also explains why absolutely strong acids have to have conjugates that aren't really reactive at all. So the reaction can go all the way in one direction. And the same thing for an absolutely strong base. All right. So yeah, most people are very confused about this because they don't realize that acidic and basic are used in both absolute and relative senses. So what were we trying to say here? We knew that this was an um, absolutely weak acid. That means that its conjugate must be an absolutely weak conjugate base. So this reaction is going to go to equilibrium. So here we have a weak acid and its weak conjugate base. Weak acids always have weak conjugates in absolute terms. And weak bases always have weak conjugate acids in absolute terms. Does that make sense, or was that just gobbledygook? I don't know. No, no. OK. All right. I hope that made sense. So uh, all right. Um, but are we done with that? Can I erase this now? No. OK. So where were we? We were deciding, is this reaction going to, go to, going to go to equilibrium or to completion? Equilibrium. Equilibrium, because there's nothing strong here. We have a, uh, a weak acid here, and it's weak conjugate over here. So it has to go to equilibrium. That means that I should not put in numbers for the changes. I think one of you might have made the mistake of trying to put in numbers. But for an equilibrium reaction, we put in variables, because we don't know how far forward or reverse it's going to go. Um, and uh, if we use up x of this, we should get an increase of x in this and an increase of x in this. Now, theoretically, it's not really obvious even whether this reaction is going to go forward or reverse. So you could just as well be adding the x to the left side and subtracting the x from the right. It's all going to come out of the math. But the, the, the simplest thing is to assume it's going forward. So we're generally going to assume these reactions go forward and do a negative here and a positive here. So that would leave us now, uh, well, would you take it to the next step? Oh, so that's right where you're getting a little stuck. So this would now give us 1 minus x, x. And x plus 0.5. OK, so now what? 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4 equals um, 0.5 times x over 1. After the equation. That actually is You know how like the reason we can disregard the the variable sometimes is because like it's the five percent rule, right? Okay. Isn't that he's gonna give us a problem where like all the students it. think it's the five percent rule applies, but really he, like just now. Uh, let's see. Well, I haven't had a chance to look at your uh, midterm, so I wasn't able to see uh, whether they had any questions like that or not. Uh, if you send me the midterms, and uh, if I have time, I'll try to take a look at those and okay. see what types of questions are in there. Uh -huh. um, but in any case, we have so much to go through today that we'll, let's just stick with the, the basic case, which is, yeah. which is when you can make the approximations. And later on, if we need to, we can do the more difficult case. OK. So um, all right. So here's the equation that we have so far. I think you were already seeing the approximations that we can make. Um, this would be like a cubic equation unless we start making some approximations. Um, well, again, 0.5, uh, well, x here might be much smaller than 0.5. So we can approximate that as just, so what should I approximate this as? 0.5. 0.5. Just 0.5. And how should I approximate the bottom? 1. one. Yeah, because this is probably much smaller than 1, because this is a weak acid and a weak conjugate again. Oh, I was going to do.
Sorry, what did you get? I got 4.05. I got 3.4. Okay. Let's see. Um. There you go. Okay. This is an important case that most people don't know how to deal with that you'll see on the test. Um, so which case are we in on the handout now? Um, weak acid and weak conjugate base. That was the last case above the, the thicker line. When we have both a weak acid and its weak conjugate base in the same place. Most students get pretty confused about this. Let's review the key points. And you definitely want to make a note of where this is in your tutoring notes. You can go back and review it. First of all, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to make the acid react directly with the base. <coughs> Neither of you made that mistake because that, that was good. We don't want to put both of them on the same side of the equation. It makes sense to put them on opposite sides. We only need one equation, because the one equation has both of these things. Um, this goes to uh, equilibrium, so you don't try to put in a number here. You just put in a variable. Uh, and then we solve this, and we use our normal approximations. By the way, are these approximations safe? Well, um, here we have about 10 to the negative 4. And that's being compared here to about uh, 10 to the negative 2 or 10 to the negative 1. So it's, it's a lot smaller. Uh, does it satisfy the 5% rule? I think so. So 0.5 divided by 3.6 times 10 to the negative 4. No. It is the opposite. We got 3.6 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 0.5. Oh, it's not even close. It's like 0.07%. Uh, so it's less than 1%. Okay. So this number here is less than 1% of 0.5. Um, so I think you're remembering the right rule. Usually they say that it's safe to make this approximation if x is 5% um, or less of the starting amount. Uh, well, here it definitely was less. You can't tell whether it's going to be less until you've solved the problem, and then you can check it at the end. Starting amount of HCOOH? Of any of the starting amounts. But it was easier to be 5%. It was harder to be 5% of this than this. So this is the one that we have to check to make sure that it's safe in this case. But you should be 5% or less than all the starting amounts, because we're approximating this is less than 0.5 and less than 0.1. So it has to be less than 5% of both of those. So the only way to see if the approximation works is to try it and see if the number comes out to be very small. All right, like I say, I haven't looked at the, the test yet, so I don't know whether you're expecting to do the harder case where you have to use. Well, in this case, x squared. Yeah, you wouldn't get a quadratic equation here. You, would still get, you, you, would, you wouldn't get a cubic. You would still get a quadratic. So I guess you could solve it with the quadratic equation.